I want to ask you a question. What could happen if we could open our hearts to allow the power of God to invade our lives? What do you think could happen if we, we could open our hearts and allow the King of Glory to come in and invade our hearts? I believe it would be amazing. This is something that Charles uh, Spurgeon wrote in the 1800s. I would that this rushing mighty wind would come upon his church with an irresistible force that would carry everything before it. The force of truth, but of more than truth, the force of God driving truth home into the hearts and consciences of men. I would that you and I could breathe this wind and receive its... How, how do you pronounce this word? Invigorating. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Just that it looked like a hundred words to me right then. It's invigorating. Everybody say invigorating. That we would receive its invigorating influence that we might be made champions of God and of His truth. How many people want to be a champion for God? And of His truth. I believe that that's what God wants us. Oh, that it would drive every uh, away our midst of doubt and clouds of error. Come, sacred wind, our nation needs you. The whole world requires you. The foul odour that broods over this deadly calm would fly in your divine lightning. Enlightening the word and set the moral atmosphere in commotion. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We need you. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Father, I ask you this morning that by your Spirit you would come and in your own special way. Father, I pray today that we would have eyes and ears opened, our eyes to be able to behold the, the champion Christ that we have, an almighty God that's looking down from glory and, and calling us on, the mighty Holy Spirit that, that wants to just move and, and, and help us to smash every wrong thought that comes into our mind. And Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak a little bit, uh, carry on from last week. I was talking about relationship and understanding what God has for us and, and our purpose and our plan. I know I've used the, the, the phrase a lot, don't just sit on your blessed assurance, but get up and do something for God. And I, and I believe that, that God wants to empower His church. He wants His church to rise above everything and to go out and be the church, to be a voice. I honestly believe that when John, who was the one that was preparing the way of our Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that that same atmosphere has to come again where there's a group of people that, that go forth to prepare the return of Jesus Christ. And uh, so relationship. Everything in our walk with God has to flow from relationship. It's a very sad thing, but I'm going to read some scriptures here. In Matthew chapter 7, if you'd like to have a look at it with me. Matthew chapter 7, it says here, not everyone, in verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. They're, they're the words of Jesus. 
That's what Jesus had to say. Jesus said those words, and it's a sad thing. Everything in our walk with God must flow out of a relationship. It doesn't flow out of a relationship, there's a possibility we could go into error. You see, we can function out of giftings and not relationship. Preachers may have a natural ability, a natural charisma, or a natural thing that just draws people. Prophets, singers, musicians, evangelists, all these sort of people using natural abilities or natural giftings instead of flowing out of His presence or out of His anointing. And there's something that I believe has got to come into the hearts of men and women again. Is a, it's really that hunger for God. And, and if you can build a relationship, not just looking and being judgmental or whatever it might be, because you see, we come amongst the people that aren't perfect. Don't expect me to be perfect. Ask Nancy. Ask the dog. Ask my neighbor. <laughs> no, don't ask him. He wouldn't get that like me. <laughs> but it's got to, it flows out of, a, out of that relationship. Ephesians 1.17 says, for the, for the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. You see, if we can just come to Him, He is going to fill us with knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom builds its own house. I believe that in our daily walk, no matter what we're doing, whether we're mowing the lawn or whatever it is, but if our heart, if that innermost part of you, you see, the enemy wants to get hold of that, and he wants to, he wants to take it in another direction. He wants to take it into a direction of, of self, of bless me. And a lot of the church, we can just get in this bless me thing. But you see, God wants our heart. And if in, in our daily walk and wherever we're doing, and if in our mind we can just start thinking or singing to yourself, I keep falling in love with Him. Over and over and over and over. And sometimes I'm just driving in my car and I, I start to sing. Not with Nancy in there because I don't want to embarrass her <laughs> with my voice. <laughs> But my heart, it just goes out to Him. Keep falling in love with Him. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. See, keep your heart tender. Keep your hearts tender towards God. And I believe that it's not striving, it's not struggling, it's not, not trying to, to make it happen. But if we can... Do that, I believe that God's going to start to create and develop something in your midst that, that will blow your thinking. How many people want your mind and your thinking blown away and see what God can do? Some in the name of the Lord or use their giftings for profit. I don't understand, and I might be incorrect here, but I don't understand why... A minister needs a $52 million jet. He might need it. I don't need one of them. <laughs> and it might be because I don't need one that I don't have a passion for it. But somebody else it may be. I believe God is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. I pray that you can understand where I'm weaving and what's, what I believe God is saying to me. And what I believe God is saying to me, He is saying to you. Because we're part of one body. We're the church. 
I believe God is seeking those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. A people who want to see the kingdom of God established on planet earth. It's okay to say amen if you, if you agree with that. You know what I mean? And I believe we all have a part to play. Jesus said, I will build my word, my I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. See, Jesus isn't going around with a nail bag on building churches everywhere. You are the church. In other words, what he's saying is, I want to build you so the gates of Hades could not prevail against you. I want to build you so that you'll walk up to that, that wall that's made out of matchsticks or wafer thin and walk right through it. Walk right through it. Jesus wants to build you so the gates of Hades will not prevail against you. Will you let him? That's the question. Will you let him fill you again with passion for the lost? Will you let him fill you again with passion for the lost? Friend, we need a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that today? We, we need to be filled again. You know, it's an ama it's amazing grace. And I'd like for you to have a look with me, if you would, in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 16. And most of you all know where I'm going. But I believe that it's a time for us to rise up and be the church. And let God be God and, and let his kingdom be established in our hearts. Amen. Holy Ghost. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. It doesn't say they might, it says they will. They will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Go into all the world and preach this gospel. In Mark uh, 16, 20, it says, and they went out. They just didn't sit around. They went out and they preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, God doing things for them. You know, these scriptures here, sometimes we look at ourselves and, and we think, man, but who am I? I'm a nobody. And, and all these wrong thoughts come into our minds. And, and, you know, I want to say this. The disciples weren't perfect either. They were men and women. They were people just like us. And they had things in their minds and they, and, and they, 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 they had problems. And, you know, Jesus came and he passed and he, and, and he lived on this planet and, and he spoke to them. But when they, when they heard uh, the words of God, when they came to him, the, the disciples, uh, they, they, they didn't believe. Jesus came to, 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 to motivate and activate these people. And I believe that that's what he's done for the church. He's come to motivate us, to activate us. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and, and you're going to be a witness unto me. And, and what happens is, and I look at the disciples and, and I see these disciples that, that Jesus has spent all this time with and, and yet it says that he came and, and he upbraided them for their unbelief and the hardness of their hearts. Somewhere or other, the, their mind could not comprehend. They couldn't realize what, what God really wanted for them to do. And they were, they were in a total state of unbelief. And we, the church, at times, we, we get caught up because the enemy wants to take us off course, wants to take us down a different road, wants to get us thinking wrong. And, and, and we lose sight of the Great Commission. We lose sight of the purpose that we're on this planet for. 
And when we lose sight of that which the disciples had done, they were there and it says that, that the, the women came to them and that they were weeping and they were full of sorrow and, and most probably saying to themselves, oh, we, we thought this or we thought that and we thought by now. And I know that when I first got saved, I thought Jesus was coming back within five years. That's a long time ago. And sometimes these thinkings and thoughts that we get into our mind get, just, just steal everything. And these disciples were like that, friend. We, we, the disciples were weeping and, and in sorrow and, and there, and, and they, they ran in and they said, He's risen, He's risen, we've seen Him, and they didn't believe them. And then they met, met two others that were on their way home and, and he, Jesus, it says, he appeared in a different form and he spoke to them and, and, and then he revealed himself as they, as they broke bread together and they saw that it was a Christ and, and, and they ran back to the disciples. They said, we've seen him, we've seen him, we've seen him. We've seen him. But they still didn't believe. Friend, the thing that you've got to, and I've got to get out of my mind is unbelief. Unbelief that, that, you know, yeah, I believe, but, but that man once said, help my unbelief. Because doubts get into your mind. Think, wrong thinking gets into your mind. I believe, but help my unbelief. And after that, he appeared to the, the another form to the two, and they went and told them, and they said, we still don't believe. We still don't believe. Jesus then came into the room. And he, and he opens up his hands and he shows them the, the, the scars and things like that. And then something dynamic happened. The change came. I believe with every fiber of my being that God is about to bring change into his church. Why sit we here till we die? I have a great saying, don't die till you're dead. Don't give up. And it says in verse 20, it says, And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. And the thing that, I, that amazed me there is God working with them. God working with us. God wants to work with you. God wants to, and I've often said this too, you must give God something to work with. He's not going to pick you up and, and shake you or something like that. No, we have to understand that this is the great commission, that we rise up, we let God come into our lives, and we go out and we start to talk with somebody. We start to do something. We start to share the gospel. We start to uh, do what God tells us to do, which these people went. And they went and told people, friend, you don't have to know everything about Revelation. Although if you want to know it, go to the teaching sessions and you'll find out all about it. But what you do need to know is that God is working with us. God is working for us. And what I have to get through my thick head sometimes is that God wants that person saved more than I do. God wants to reveal Christ more than I do. The Holy Spirit wants to be motivated and, and do what He can do more than I want Him to do it. It's not like I've got to get the Holy Ghost or God or Jesus or any of them and get them in an arm lock and force them saying, come on, God, you've got to do something here. You've got to move. You've got to do this. God wants to do it more than I do. Perhaps God's got to get me in an arm lock. <laughs> Perhaps God's got to do something in us. How many people would say amen to that? God working with them. Can you imagine this? God working with us. How do you get God to work with us? How do I get God to work with me? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. <laughs> Very simple. They go and they went. In Acts 1.8 again, I'll say it again. You shall receive power and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the, and to the uttermost parts of the world. 
we keep it in the church. We've got to break the walls down, amen. We've got to go forth. They went out. When they went out, God went with them. You see, when you start going out, and you start talking to somebody, God can go with you. The Holy Ghost can go with you. He can go and confirm your words. You can go and lay hands on the sick. It may not happen the first time because you might have to be still full of unbelief. But if you just keep doing what God tells you to do, sooner or later you'll break through. Sooner or later you'll see God doing something. In Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Hallelujah. Amen. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed, the word of God for sowing shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Come again with rejoicing. Friend, I want to tell you something awesome to be able to just rejoice and see people saved. Has anybody led anybody to Jesus? Ever led anybody to Christ? Oh, the joy that floods your soul. Something happens. Amen. Come again with rejoicing, shouts of joy. Oh, what a joy it is to see people being born again, filled with the Spirit. Give me the old-time religion. <laughs> Give me the old-time religion. Amen. The old-time religion where people come, where, they're, where the altars are offered to them and they come weeping, tears of repentance. It's not if you want to get saved, go up the back and get a free cappuccino. I don't know what's going on there, but I, I pray that people get through. We all need an encounter with God. We all need that, that I don't know, that, that touch from God that, that you know because you know because you know that God has touched me. He touched me. And now I know He touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. He touched me. Touched me. I got saved in a, in a non-Pentecostal or church. And all the time we were in that church, we were the only ones that ever got saved. Not much emotion, not much spirit, but God touched us. Nancy got saved the same day, the same night. God touched us. Didn't have a real encounter, but God touched us. Didn't have that real encounter until one day. One day I came out the front and the power of God touched me. I had an encounter with God and that encounter still lingers over your life. It still lingers around you. Friend, everybody needs an encounter. We need to have an encounter with God. We need to be able to come and stand and, and open up our hearts and let the King of glory come in. Let him, let, him, let him somehow or other touch your life. Seen people just being touched and tears and all oh, the joy. It's okay to, to be emotional. Touched us. Had an encounter. Must have an individual encounter. I was thinking the other day is, a lot of people are thinking of Michael Jackson, Katy Perry, Mariah Carey, others. Brought up in the church. Great giftings on their life. Musical giftings. Great giftings and they perhaps never had that real encounter with God. They might have been relying on their parents. They might have been relying on something else, but everybody needs an encounter. Amen? Encounter with God. You draw close to Him, He says, I will draw close to you. And I believe that this is where we're at. Our church, this people, there's, there's something that's drawing Give me a wave if you know what I'm talking about. 
There's something that's bringing us into, a, into, a, into, into His presence. I long to be in His presence. I long to be in His presence. That's the longing of my heart. Mark 10, 52, Jesus said to the blind man, Go your way, your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and he began to follow Jesus. I believe that this is where God wants us for our faith in him to rise. This blind man cried out. And there's got to come a cry from the hearts of God's people. It's not just bless me, Father. It's not just this or that. But it's our heart wanting God, going after God. God, you are the most important part of my life. You are more important than houses and cars and this and that's. You will supply all of my need according to His riches in glory. You see, there are a lot of promises that God has given to the church that over the years have been eroded away that we almost don't believe it anymore. Come on, it's all right, dude. God's not going to strike you dead because you're telling the truth. It's almost been eroded. It's almost not a part of the message anymore. It's almost not even in our expectancy anymore. It's all done away with. But you see, all those promises, my Bible says, are yea and amen. Is that correct? My Bible tells me that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, my word shall not pass away, but my word will accomplish that which I've sent it to accomplish. So what I'm saying is this, is that everything that God has promised is yea and amen, and it's there. But you see, if we have drifted so far away, we're not under the spout where the glory comes out. And we, the church... If you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And so what God's looking for is our heart. It's our heart. He's not, if I can say it like this, he's not looking for perfection. He would never have chosen me if he was looking for perfection. He's looking for a heart. He's looking for a people that will... will even say, not my will, but thine be done. See, man has got plans, but God's plans are greater. God says, my ways are better and higher than your ways. My ways are not your ways. But as we, as God's people, start to say, God, I want to come close to you. It doesn't matter And I'm not saying this for any reason, because as far as I'm concerned, we've got the greatest group of musicians and singers in the world, because they're ours, amen? But it doesn't matter if it's not perfect up there. Amen? It doesn't matter if they hit the wrong note. In the prayer meetings, I take off in a song and I'm nowhere near the note. <laughs> but somewhere in the first five or ten letters, whatever it is, we get there. <laughs> Somebody helps. We sang one song in about seven different keys. But we got there. It's a heart. <laughs> I'm talking from my heart. If you come here to get some message that's going to... 
blow you up. Because God wants our hearts. He wants us to believe in Him. How did that blind man... There were many people that day that needed to be healed, but the blind man came to Him. The woman who had the issue of blood, it says that there were many touching Him. But one was touching Him, obviously, with a different way. I don't understand it because I wasn't there. But it's very obvious that she was touching Him in a totally different way. And the fact that she said about the hem of his garment talks about royalty and goodness knows what else, and I'm not even going to try and go there. But she obviously saw him not just as the healer. Not just as a man that can give me what I want. But she obviously saw him in a different light that made her push through. And she said, if I can draw near to him, he will draw near to me. If I can but touch the hem of his garment. Friend, this morning, in our worship, in our praise, we're not just singing songs here, but in the midst of that, if you can reach out beyond yourself and into another realm and touch God, I want to tell you, Glory will come down and glory will fill your soul. Hallelujah. You can come in one way and just go out the same way. You can get water baptized, go in dry, come out wet, and not still get touched by God. Or you can say, God, I'm coming to you. Here I am. Here I am, the woman with the issue of blood. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, what did he say to her? Daughter, your faith has made you well. It's not a matter of just praying, it's, it's faith. It's God coming into our lives. Jesus, who was doing all these great miracles, went to his own country where they looked at him, this one that was anointed, this one that had triumphed, this one that had smashed everything that needed to be smashed, that carried that mantle from God's throne above, could do no great miracles because of unbelief. Need help, we've got to have faith. Faith comes by hearing. You won't get faith from a social gospel. Excuses won't help you get faith. Only the truth, only God's word. For faith to be produced in our hearts, only the word of God can produce faith. God loves to confirm his word. These guys went out. They went out. Friend, we don't want to hear a social gospel, do we? She'll be right, mate. Coming to church really, really, to some people, it's religion. Coming to church, it's more than coming to church, isn't it? It's coming to Christ. It's coming in with an attitude. It's coming in with a heart. Coming in with joy. My son's got a couple of acres. He's got this big chook pen. I went into the chook pen the other day and I didn't become a rooster. Ken's been waiting for that one. Though some people say I crow a lot. I pray today that we can just come with a heart. Amen. I'm just going to ask for the musicians to come back.
Holy Ghost. You know, over in the darkest of Africa, people from all walks of life, men, doctors, children, are penetrating the darkness with the gospel. I was reading a story this morning, Reinhard Bonnke. Reinhard Bonnke went over to Africa as a missionary. First times there because he, he felt the call of God. Can I say this? Oh, you know, the call of God is something, but there's more. He was called by God, but he was out there doing everything and nothing was happening. And God started to deal with his heart. God started to deal with his heart. You know what? He was ready to quit. He was ready to go home. He said, I was going to go home and get a job and forget all about the call. But praise God, he lingered long enough that God could get his heart. And God could reveal to him, and he revealed those scriptures to him, it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my spirit. And for Australia, for the Sunshine Coast to get saved, it is not by our mind, it's not by our power, but it's by his spirit. I want you to stand your feet. I want you to think about that skit. I want you to think about people that you could go and talk to. I want you to think about people that, that you can go and share the gospel with. You don't have to have all your doctrine, all your philosophy. But you need to come close to Him. Let's just worship. We just worship. Let's just worship. your hands up right now. Lord, read our hearts. Draw us close to you, Lord. We're coming, Lord. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming to you, Jesus. We're coming to you. just want to come to you, Jesus. You might be here this morning and you're not sure where you stand with God. I want you to know that God if you come to him, he will come to you. You might have thought, God, you can't use me again or you'll never use me. God wants to use you. He won't abuse you. He wants to use you. He wants to fill your heart with joy. I'm just going to open this altar. I've, I've, I'm going to say this. I just feel this morning so inadequate. I feel so inadequate. I feel empty. But I know that God's hands upon us. Help us, Father, to come through it. That you can use us. If you're here in this place this morning, God's talking to you. 
just want to come and stand in His presence, just do that. We're going to sing to God be the glory, J.D. We can do that. To God be the glory. Open your hearts to Him. It's a strange morning this morning. But I know God wants our hearts. God just wants our hearts. God's speaking to you and tapping you on the shoulder. Just come as we sing this song. Just come. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. There's a bunch of people here right now. I believe you want to be a voice. You want to be a voice. You want God to raise you up. You want to be a voice. I want you to quickly slip out the front of you. I want to pray with you. Right? You want to be a voice. God's speaking to you about being a voice. You want to be a voice. You want to be a voice. You just don't want to be a, a, a Sunday Christian. You want to be a voice. One crying out in the wilderness. One crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. You want to be a voice. You want to be a voice. You want to be a voice. God will raise you up. God will raise you up. God wants to raise you up. There are others. Quickly come. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. I believe this is from God right now. You want to be a voice. God's speaking to you right now. Quickly come. Quickly, quickly. Okay, Jay. To God. This is it. This is it. This is it. Be this is it. Hour. For the 